US defense chiefs have identified what they say is a second Chinese surveillance balloon, this time over Latin America. The first balloon is floating across the US Midwest. Antony Blinken, the US Secretary of State, has cancelled a trip to Beijing and accused the Chinese authorities of being irresponsible. China insists the balloon is a weather monitoring device which has blown off course. Our North America correspondent Peter Bowes reports. A surreal but increasingly serious international row. This speck in the sky could be spying on the US. The Chinese balloon that's been hovering over the country for several days. China insists it's a platform to conduct weather-related research that's deviated from its route. Beijing has apologised, but the US State Department says it stands by its assessment that the balloon is being used for surveillance. And defence officials now say there's a second balloon. We're seeing reports of a balloon transiting Latin America. We now assess it is another Chinese surveillance balloon. Anthony Blinken had been due in Beijing this weekend to hold talks on a wide range of issues, including security, Taiwan and COVID-19. But he said that was no longer possible because the purpose of the trip, to forge better relations between the two countries, had been undermined. The presence of this surveillance balloon in U.S. airspace is a clear violation of U.S. sovereignty and international law, that it's an irresponsible act and that the PRC's decision to take this action on the eve of my planned visit is detrimental to the substantive discussions that we were prepared to have. Beijing says in a phone call on Friday night, Mr Blinken was told by his Chinese counterpart that accidental incidents had to be dealt with in a calm and professional manner and that both parties needed to avoid any misjudgments. U.S. defence officials say the first balloon is still hovering somewhere over the United States and they're keeping their options open. And I can tell you that the balloon continues to move eastward and is currently over the centre of the continental United States. Again, we currently assess that the balloon does not present a military or physical threat to people on the ground at this time. Officials say the immediate objective is to get this balloon out of US airspace. Peter Bowes, BBC News. Well, our China correspondent Stephen McDonnell has been gauging the response from Beijing. If someone had asked us what will be the first major point of conflict between the US and China this year, I don't think many of us would have guessed it's a balloon on our series of balloons, but this is where we are. Now, what we're getting from the Chinese side is that China's most senior foreign policy official, Wang Yi, has now had a telephone call with Antony Blinken. And according to the foreign ministry here, I'm just reading from a sort of readout of that phone call, uh, he called for steadiness, communication, to avoid misjudgment regarding this balloon. He also, though, did say that China would not accept any groundless conjecture or hype regarding the matter. And in another written response from the foreign ministry today, they've said that some politicians and media in the US have hyped up this matter. Uh, China has done its best to say that this is a balloon that's accidentally gone off course, but, you know, it, it hasn't worked in terms of keeping the, the trip going ahead. And imagine if you're an official, either in Washington or Beijing, who's been working on this trip, the hope that Antony Blinken visiting Beijing this weekend was going to lead to a, something of a breakthrough in terms of mending relations. Instead, we've got the trip put on hold, and worse than that, a new point of crisis. So where do you think that leaves relations now? Will both sides be keen to try and get it back on track as quickly as possible? Yeah, I mean, I think... Well, look, imagine there's a series of things that could happen. Just say that the US is able to get hold of this and determine that it actually does look like it was a weather balloon, which potentially had drifted off course. Well... That, of course, would ease tensions, and then they might say, OK, well, let's get the trip back on track. Another possibility is that they decide, well, you know what, sure, it's a weather balloon, but actually it could also be used for spying. Now, nevertheless, you know, of course, the US spies on China. They all, everyone spies on everyone. So what they might also do is just let things calm down for a little bit, and then perhaps after the, the big political meeting here in March, reschedule another time for Antony Blinken, to visit China to attempt yet again uh, to ease tensions between the world's two superpowers.
Stephen McDonnell there. Well, earlier I spoke to Sam Rogovine, who is a director of the Lowy Institute International Security Programme. I asked him if he thought it was an accident or deliberate. Uh, impossible to say. I certainly wouldn't take China's word for it that, that, what, that this was by accident. I guess what I would say, though, is that even though the spying, if this is a spying mission, that this, even if the method is somewhat novel, uh, spying itself is, is, of course, ubiquitous throughout history and both sides in this, uh, in this dispute, US and China, are uh, doing it constantly. Um, I guess the method is novel and therefore that's what's, uh, that's what's prompted this reaction, I think. Novel, but not really very subtle. Yeah, exactly. And that does make me wonder about your first question about whether this was deliberate or a mistake, because whatever China could have expected to gain in terms of intelligence value uh, doesn't seem to weigh very heavily against uh, the kind of uh, risks it was taking and uh, which have been brought home now by the, uh, uh, the escalation of the diplomatic dispute between the two sides. And um, was the US Secretary of State right to cancel his visit in light of this? Um, I, I suspect there was a bit of domestic politics at play here. I, from what I've seen, the Republicans are making uh, are making hay at the moment and uh, uh, continuing with the visit when this issue is uh, is making a lot of headlines in the US would probably have uh, rebounded pretty negatively on the administration. So I think I, I suspect that uh, domestic factors played a big role here. China has issued a rare statement of regret, hasn't it? So what do you think is going on there? I think perhaps the Chinese side saw that uh, the United States was taking this extremely seriously and that it was creating an awful lot of headlines. Uh, and perhaps th th this, was, uh, this was something they hadn't anticipated and uh, it was going to do more damage than they were, uh, they were hoping. And, uh, and perhaps they wanted to salvage this Blinken visit as well. Uh, it clearly hasn't done the trick. Yeah, I mean, the visit's off. What does it mean, do you think, in the short and long term for US-China relations? Because as you say, both nations do spy on each other. They just hope they're not going to get caught. Right, and we should remember that, um, I mean, it is unusual for uh, aircraft to fly over uh, another's territory, um, but they certainly fly alongside their territory and they fly, uh, excuse me, they, they um, uh, put satellites into space that go directly over uh, each other's territory. So uh, they're constantly doing that. And in fact, th there is some evidence that the United States has high altitude stealthy drones as well in service that do uh, breach uh, other nations' airspace. So uh, it, it is fairly common. Look, I, I, I suspect this is going to be a, a delay, uh, a postponement of the Blinken visit that is not going to be too extensive. I think the dust will settle and then we'll see Blinken head out there again.